I'm Carrie Krebsfagen asked. She, her, hers, an ordained elder in the Wisconsin Conference of the United Methodist Church, and currently serving as a chaplain in a food processing plant. I call myself the steel toe chaplain because of the shoes that I wear when I care for the emotional, mental, and spiritual needs of our over 900 team members. When I come into the plant each day, I put on my steel toe boots, I grab a hairnet, safety glasses, earplugs, my hard hat, and in this current time, I put on a mask. Each day, I take care of the whole person as they walk through the doors and report to work. The conversations I have might talk about housing, reliable or unreliable transportation, grief, finances, mental health. I may coach a supervisor on strategies for empathy and compassion. I may facilitate a conversation between a manager and an hourly team member. I might provide resources to our human resources department on mental health awareness. This is nowhere where I thought I would be when I attended seminary and graduated from Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary in 2004 with an MDiv. I trained to be a local church pastor. But one thing I've discovered over the years since is that one ministry setting has prepared me for the next part of God's calling. For example, CPE was simply a requirement for ordination. And yet now I find that it has equipped me to do this work, to do this ministry. I was part of a small group several years ago on family systems. And I find now that that has helped me navigate the manufacturing system. A class on the Quran, well, I was a student at Getz that I was able to take at Northwestern University, continued to open my eyes, fill me with compassion and care for people who practice other faith traditions. You know, a significant learning that I had while a student at Garrett has been further honed in my time in ministry. And that's how I react to new information or a new situation or a new experience. I remember sitting in Old Testament, first semester of seminary, and here the professor began to talk about two creation stories. What? Huh? It didn't match what I had encountered in Sunday school, that beautiful storybook of seven days and God said it was good. So how was I going to react? I began to practice taking a deep breath, engaging in study and conversation, prayer as I asked God, where are you in this situation? And then prepared myself to act. In a liberation theology class, I was presented with a paper that talked about how the native people of North America understand themselves in the Canaanite the people who were pushed out of the promised land, those that were the unchosen of God. Again, I looked within, I studied, I began to have conversations, I prayed, God, how are you present in this? I engaged this new information. In a church history class, I was horrified to learn how the sacred text in my faith, the Bible, had been and was continuing to be used to oppress people. Again, deep breath, pause with the material, study where is God and prepare to act. I have found that my ministry has been full of new information, situations, and experiences. And I've used this skill set, first begun and developed and nurtured in seminary, to become faster and more thorough, 
more systematic in these situations. As a workplace chaplain, I work with people of all different cultural backgrounds, political persuasions, ages, theological understandings, and backgrounds. I was recently in the break room speaking to a Black man. He grew up in a neighborhood that was part of race riots as he was growing up. His mother was stabbed, his older siblings greatly impacted. And now as he watches images of the Black Lives Matter protest, he's experiencing symptoms of PTSD. As tears filled his eyes and he was speaking to me about these current feelings, another team member walked by us, a man wearing a Trump 2020 hat and a t-shirt emblazed with a Confederate flag saying, if you don't like it, leave. Both of these men bring their whole persons to work. As a steel toe ta- chaplain, I ask, where is God in the lives of my team members? Where is God in this situation? And how can I best serve God as the hands and feet? It is the honor of my ministry to be trusted with these whole people. Blessings to you as you fulfill the role that God is calling you to do.